Okay, go ahead, 37. The Israelites traveled from Ramses to Sukkot, Sukkot, which means tabernacles or booths. It's the same name that uh, Jacob named the land when he came down from uh, Padan Aram and he, he built booths for the, the animals. Okay, Sukkot. About 600,000 on foot besides their family. Okay, it's going to be more specific later, 603,550 men. But, <laughs> yeah, it, it will. It'll be very specific, but... Here it says about 600,000. Later it will give you the exact number and it's going to... And now, oh, yeah, well, it, 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 yeah, it's going to... Yeah, exactly. It's going to give you the numbers and one thing that they're going to do, I think it's in uh, Numbers chapter 41 maybe, or maybe it was in... Uh, anyway, um, later on it's going to remind you of every single place that they stopped during the 38 years of wandering in the wilderness. Actually the 40 years because it includes this... Uh, non-punishment time and they're going to say they went from Ramses to Sukkoth and it's going to give the entire breakdown of it and it's going to name places that aren't in here because obviously they went to other places that aren't told during that 38 years but and anyway, oh here it is verse 38 answer another question go ahead and F oh I'm sorry yeah uh, Ramses to Sukkoth about 600 oh 38 I don't know what are you looking and for F, what's that word ethically oh ethnically, ethnically. mixed ethnically. yes the first crowd also went up with them, along with a huge number of livestock, both flocks and herds. Okay, ethnically diverse means they're not all Jewish people. Here it says a mixed multitude. So that was answering another portion of her question. Did the blood save non-Jewish people? Well, these people are going out with them, and they're from all different ethnics. They might be the Hiscos that li live there. They might be Egyptians that live there. They might be other slave people from Libya. Who knows? But they all went out, and they were all part of this group of people, okay? Ethnically, it's not just the Hebrews that came out. Okay, go ahead. The people baked the dough they had brought out <laughs> Excuse me. into unleavened loaves, since it had no yeast. For when they had been driven out of Egypt, they could not delay and had not prepared any provisions for themselves. Plus, the Lord told them not to take any yeast, right? So there you go. The time that the Israelites lived in Egypt was 430 years. Okay, now remember what it said. This verse has led a lot of people to believe that they were in Egypt for 430 years. The way that's translated says it, the way this one is translated. Now the sojourn of the children of Egypt who lived in Egypt was 430 years. Okay, the King James Version says this exact same verse, but they put two commas in here. It says, now the sojourn of the children of Israel, comma, who lived in Egypt, comma, was 430 years. Paul makes it absolutely clear that they were not in Egypt. Here's Egypt. Here's Israel over here. They were not in Egypt for 430 years. It was 430 years from the time of the covenant with Abraham to the time of the reception of the law in the Sinai Peninsula. Okay? And he says that in Galatians. What was it? We read it before. Chapter 4, maybe. Anyway, 430 years from the time of the reception. I'm sorry, not the law. To the time of the Exodus. It was 430 years from here to here. Okay? Anyway, that's said in the New Testament. If you look, you've got the NIV there, right? Is that the NIV? I got the following. I have an NIV. Okay, read the footnote on that verse. Not the, not the uh, commentary, but the footnote. Read the footnote. It, it'll say... 430 years to the very day, see notes on Genesis 15, 13, Acts 7, 6, that's all it says. It doesn't give you... Masoretic text. Yeah, that's what I want. The Masoretic text says 430 years. Oh, sorry. Okay. What else? And? Samaritan, Pentateuch, the Septuagint. Septuagint, Egypt, and Canaan. Okay, so the Samaritan Pentateuch and the Septuagint, which is called the LXX, because 50, 10, 10, and 70. Okay, Septuagint means 70 in Greek. Okay, the Samaritan Pentateuch, which is a copy of the Old Testament, but it changes Jerusalem to Samaria. Okay, that's the only difference. But other than that, this one says both Canaan and Egypt, okay? This one says Egypt, okay? And this one here, which is a Greek translation of the Old Testament, which predates Christ. This one here also says Canaan and Egypt. Which one is correct and why? Well, we know which one is correct because the New Testament tells us that it was 430 years from Abraham until... Anyway, we know that's correct, but... The question is, and I've gone through this before, why is this one saying 430 years in Egypt alone? Why would it do that? Because they have an issue they don't 
They have an issue that they don't want their people to know, and that issue is Christ. And so they say the entire, they have hidden about 215 years in that verse from their people so that it doesn't point to Jesus. Instead, it points to a guy named Bar Kokhba. How long okay. were they in Canaan? How long were they in Canaan? Well, if you read Flavius Josephus, he says 215 years and then 215 years here. Okay, And that's another old, old, old witness. It's after the time of Christ, but it's still an ancient witness. It says 215 years here and 215 years here. Now, whether that's true or not, we can't say, you know, it's, it, that's what he wrote. and He was a great historian. But these two clearly say that the time is here, not only here. And the reason why is because by saying that it was only here, they can hide the fact that Jesus came at the fullness of time that the Bible actually says he would come. So that's why the Masoretic text, which is used for the King James Version and this version, is not correct in this instance. We know it. And in, Canaan. and in Canaan. That's right. So Canaan and Egypt, and that's confirmed by Paul's own words. And just, just so that you can see what I'm talking about, it's in Galatians, and then we'll finish up because that'll be the last thing that we'll do. Um, Corinthians, Corinthians, Galatians. It's chapter, chapter 3, is it? He, he talks about it and he gives the exact time frame right here. And, you know, you, you would think that after I've done this 400 times, I'd remember this verse, but... It's amazing. Yeah, oh, there's, there's just so much that you have to remember, and it's just hard. Oh, here it is. Um, oh, it, I think it's in chapter 4. He gives the exact time frame. He says, Mount Hagar, free woman, two covenants, one bound. Oh, okay, that's not the one I wanted. Bondage. Maybe it's in chapter 2. Hang on. Blood to Jerusalem. It's in Galatians. If you see the number 430, just start reading it out loud because I know it's right here. It's in Galatians, and he says, 430, confirmed. Okay, is that it? Oh, here it is, verse 17, 317. It says, I'm going to start with 15. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. That's the reference right there. He does not say into seeds as many, but as for one, and to your seed who is Christ. And I say that the law, which was 430 years later, so from the time of Abraham to the time of the law is 430 years, not the time in Egypt. So we have four ancient witnesses that tell us that it was Egypt and Canaan. We have Paul, we have Josephus, we have the Samaritan Pentateuch, and we have the Septuagint. Two of them predate Christ. One of them is writing about the fulfillment of Christ, Paul, and then Josephus is an unbiased witness. The Masoretic text is not correct in this, okay? It is Egypt and Canaan. That's all there is to it, but the Jewish people hid that so that they could hide the fact that Christ actually is the Messiah of Israel. Okay, I'm certain of that. All right, so having said that, we'll end on that note today and uh, we'll say a quick prayer and bail out of here for another week.